What's going on guys, Akko here coming at you with another match review and this time we've got Shanks versus Legendary Pred. Uh, this is just like the previous video, this is from uh, the pools right before top 8, this is the side top 8 and in this match, much like the last one, it is point based so the pressure is on, let's see what happens. All right, so gonna be starting out with some strong neutral here. So as usual, I just want to highlight. Uh, I love Shanks's team, by the way, because I feel like Shanks's team is such like traditional Dragon Ball. Because as you see here, uh, he uses his assists in a very particular way, and this is a very good example that anyone can follow. He uses the rocket kick here just to get close, and then he calls. Janemba B, and presumably if they block the rocket kick or if you just get in range, they're going to be forced to block this. So now you've crossed over from the neutral point of the match to the up close and personal point. So now that he's actually in and he got in relatively safely, he can use his block string assist, which is Cell, to potentially go for some kind of mix up or just get some kind of pressure going. And you can play literally any team like this, and this is how your team should be structured one assist to get in one assist to use once you're in there and try to make the most of that opportunity the nice pressure here nice so there he was out of assist so he went for a stagger and the dragon rush does go through gonna build a lot of meter Base Vegeta, a great point character because of this. Good guard cancel, good guard cancel, get out of there. Didn't wanna, didn't wanna quite blow the spark yet. Ooh, another Dragon Rush sneaks through. So sometimes on the defensive end, sometimes you may focus more on not getting hit rather than trying to stop everything because realistically, if a Dragon Rush hits you, it leads to more meter build than it does damage, depending on the situation. Whereas if you get opened up by an actual hit, uh, there's a lot more opportunity for your opponent to kill you. Definitely gonna have to hold some mix here though. Ooh, and it does get blocked, but Gohan's still alive. Ooh, okay, so that was a, that was a good option. He reflected the uh, projectile counter and opted to DP, but Shanks did not take part in that little uh, scramble right there and instead super jumped out and called his assist. And that's definitely gonna do it. So as you can see, Shanks is just playing very slow and clean, this very slow, clean, not very high committal. And now see, this is where things get tough. See, Fred now only has one assist behind him. So now he's going to have to deal with Shanks' neutral uh, and trying to open him up with only one assist. But he does have Lab Coat who excels at opening people up without assist. So it's not hopeless. Great neutral play going on here. Staggers. Yeah, Shanks is not taking any risks. Ooh, and he, he does get picked up by the spin, but no conversion there. Woo. We are definitely playing some Dragon Ball. Ooh, the cross up. And that's going to be more than enough to get Lap Coat out of there. And just like that, we are down to one character. One character on Pred's side. Five bars. Ooh, nice. Most likely gonna go for level three Oki here, yep. What are we gonna do with this? Raw Dragon Rush, it does get teched. And once again, 
Let me just highlight that once again, uh, once they get back to the neutral phase, because Pred backed off after his uh, Dragon Rush didn't get anything, so he decided to back off, which is the right choice. And Shanks takes this opportunity to call his ranged assist, moves in once it's been blocked, goes for the pressure, and then extends with his block stun assist. This is this is DBFZ 101. Forces the spark out. Very good spark by Shanks as well, because there's really no reason to take this risk here, because if his cell were to get hit here, uh, he would definitely die with how much health he has. So rather than risk the snowball nature of Pred killing his character and then, you know, restarting back to neutral and all that stuff, he just decides to spark to put an end to all that. And that, that is a great choice. Remember, that spark is there to save you from those kind of situations. Wow, that was a crazy attempt. So he starts the air S and then empty vanishes after calling his assist, hoping that since it's angled up, you know, Pred would be forced to block it. And then I believe here he does another S just in case Pred would have been on the ground and tried to 2H, but Pred had super jumped. So it created a little bit of a scramble there. They both had very different plans in that moment. <laughs> Man, Pred's defense in this set has been very good. I mean, really, the only thing that's been hitting him is Dragon Rush. Ooh! Can't block forever, though. Cannot block forever. Take the slide, knockdown. Ooh. Ooh, we do not get the conversion there. But that Janemba B is going to close it out. So both are playing very well in that first match. Let's see what the adjustment is in the second match. And Pred once again playing more defensively. Shanks not taking any risks. Ooh, that wall bounce. Man, that cell B is pretty damn good, man. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh my goodness, that was so sneaky because he just went for the float. It looked like he was going to go for some kind of mix up and then he just raw dragon rushes. <laughs> Man, those dragon rushes, they are finding their mark. Going to build a lot of meter off this. And yes, see, this is the greatest strength of having Cell in the back. That's why I really like Shanks' team build here because it's like you've got a battery on point. You've got a reliable anchor in the back, and then you've got someone who's great at spending meter in the middle. Like, this is a fantastic way to optimize team building. And then all three characters have good post-level three setups. Uh, all three characters benefit well from, you know, Lariat type assists. Like, it's a really, like, smartly crafted team. I, I like it a lot. And here you see that he's optimizing the use of Cell on the team, because I feel like in this day and age, this is where Cell shines the best is to have him in the back wait till you build up enough meter and then when you have that meter you bring him in to spend it because his level three is just absolutely ridiculous and this is going to be very tough on Fred's end very nice so he didn't go for the rolling crush mix there because he did not have an assist up and the rolling crush mix is not as effective without an assist uh, he would have had to burn Spark for it, and I don't believe that in this situation Shanks is willing to burn Spark on a mix-up. I think he, in this situation, he would rather just go for a more traditional pressure situation until his assists come back, rather than banking everything on a mix. Assists are coming back. Ooh, and, and the 6M finds its mark. Man, yeah, I think I think the main thing is Pred probably needed to be a little more aggressive in this set, but I mean, but I get it though. It's not like there's a lot of opportunity for him to do so. Shanks is playing very slow. He's not taking any risks. Okay, there we go. He's going in. Pred's going in. This, this could be pretty big. What are we going to do with this? He was in spark, so he's going to keep his assist, even though he called it. Not enough meter for a level 3 quite yet. Ooh, man, that's actually... 
Man, that's actually crazy. So I've covered that before. That is a, I mean, you call it an option select, but yeah, it's a very simple option select, but here, Shanks is just holding the tag button. Actually, if we go back a little bit further, you can see that Shanks is already holding the tag button. And this is a great option because, as you'll see here in a minute, if you hold the tag button, uh, you're going to tag as soon as you're able to. So you see that X up in the upper left-hand corner? Like, that means that he's holding it now. So it's good to try and block and hold the tag button because if you block, obviously you block, but if your opponent leaves a gap, such as trying to like jump over you or trying to bait your reflect or, you know, back dashing or just doing a big slow move, like a slower command grab or a slower overhead, that tag is going to go through. And as soon as the tag goes through, your character becomes invulnerable and the new character super dashes in. So since the dawn of time, I mean, this is no secret, but this has always been one of the biggest defensive options in this game is to simply hold the tag button. And as you see, see it, it, you got the X again. You get the X when there's not enough of a gap to tag out. That X is telling you like, hey, no, you can't tag out right now. Uh, so, you know, Pred's going for his pressure, but Shanks while blocking is holding that. And then Pred finally commits to a big slower move. And finally a big enough window comes out for him to tag. Tag goes through and Labcoat ends up getting punished for trying to go for that overhead. Which is interesting because the overhead is not that slow. A lot of times it will tag you. I believe that went through because of, yeah, because he did a pretty long dash before doing the 6H, which I respect because it's like you're trying to make it more ambiguous of putting a dash in front of it, but that ended up allowing the tag to go through. And of course, we're gonna optimize this. God, look at this corner carry, jeez. Can we look at that again? That was literally, he literally hit him in the corner. Boom, this is literally in the corner. And he takes him all the way basically to the other corner, man, sell. He's one of the best benefactors of that, you know, buff of being able to super dash off of your beams. I mean, he's one of the greatest benefactors of that. And I like this Oki attempt here. He goes for Rolling Crush uh, to try and catch an up tech and a back tech. Rolling Crush into assist call. Uh, moves like this, moves that have long animations are great for covering people's wake up because it kind of takes the guessing out of it because it lasts so long that whether they delay or whatever, you're still going to hit them and then you cover it with your assist so that you get to keep your plus frames. Oof. But Pred does jump out. Once again, Pred's getting an opportunity here. So he goes for the stock super, and despite not having a mix up, he is gonna get fully stocked off of this, which is dangerous. We're now fully stocked, gotta watch out for that. Nice tech. Ooh, and what was I saying? What did I just say? So dangerous, so dangerous. When this character, man, Man, when she gets those those move steals, she becomes so dangerous because suddenly there are just new mechanics in the mix that you have to remember. Nice. It's like, it, it's pretty jarring to be fighting a character and suddenly they have a barrier. Suddenly they can teleport. Suddenly they have a, a fast beam. You know, it's like, I feel like that is a huge strength of Majin 21 that gets overlooked. And this is one of those mix-ups that I would say is only good on people who have good reactions. You fake the overhead by doing a light early in the IED. Uh, it, it doesn't actually make contact. And because the opponent is waiting for that, you know, that pause, uh, because when you block something, you know, the game pauses for just a second. And you know, there's a reaction there to let you know like, hey, I blocked something. But when you fake a button, that pause isn't there. So it leaves the person standing waiting for it. And boom, they get hit low. Uh, this doesn't work on, on players with, you know, reactions that aren't that good, but if someone has good reactions, that's going to hit a lot. It's basically a high-level mix-up. And, oh, man, that is always so unfortunate. Oh, he actually did commit to a button there. Okay, never mind. I thought that was one of those situations where you got you got hit with a super dash in the recovery, because if you air dash, air dashes do have recovery, unlike ground dashes. So sometimes if you air dash, or back dash, you can get caught by a super dash, but he actually was fishing with a button here. And you saw that Janemba coming out. He was calling Janemba just in case. 
Level three, this mix could go through. Float mix, whoa, whoa. That was a nice, that was a nice walk out there. Like he walked out of the float. Ooh, that was ambiguous. That was so ambiguous. Ooh, my goodness. Oh, that was impossible. No one was gonna block that. Nobody on earth was gonna block that. That was, that was dirty. Cause that could that could have been the left, right, or the up, down. That was so dirty. Ooh, pelting him. Oh my God! Did you see that? That was devious. That was devious. So he just did ex knee drop in a block string. So this time he does ex cross up. Fred goes for two H, thinking it's ex knee drop again, but. Surprise, it's the cross-up. Cross-up goes through, and he ends up getting a route off of it. Damn. Ooh, we are scrambling now. We are scrambling. The pressure is on, and the scramble has begun. Combos are dropping. Level three, who do we want? Oh, we want base Vegeta. We want, we want the base. We want the base, man. Oh! Oh my goodness. Damn. Damn. And you see you see him celebrating because for Seihan, Seihan's literally on the sidelines with his life in Shanks' hands. His whole tournament career for, for the world finals is depending on Shanks. If Shanks wins this 2-0, he goes through, but if not, you know, he goes home, so you know, no one's happier about Shanks winning than Seihan because this just put him through. And let, let's take a look at that finale, though. Like, that was that was pretty crazy. So he got the level three, and I don't hate Fred's option here. He opted to do 4LL. This is not a bad option. He did 4LL basically as just, like, a buffer because if, if uh, Shanks had gone for, like, a float mix, this would have knocked him out of it. And if he would have gone for a Dragon Rush, it would have broke it. And if he would have baited something, he would have taken a turn. So this was not a bad option, but Shanks was just in Galaxy Brain mode. I don't know why he opted to do a fake out here. That's pretty crazy. I mean, I guess maybe he just expected Fred to fully commit to Wake Up Button. So he does a fake out backdash S instead of going for a mix up, which is really crazy. And then he goes back in for the Dragon Rush. So that that might have been the plan all along. I believe since the fact that he had already committed to the Dragon Rush here, I think that Shanks was going for a Dragon Rush by covering it with an S. Because this S is very plus if blocked. So I think he just wanted a plus, an ambiguous plus S into a Dragon Rush. That's, that's my best guess. And Fred was unable to break it because... Usually, if you get hit by something, you're not going to break a grab because you're still recovering from the fact that you got hit. So that grab is most likely going to go through and that does eliminate Pred from the world finals. Pretty crazy, man. These were these were shark infested waters. This was this was crazy. Like it's really crazy. Like a player like Pred who has won and been in grand finals for so many tournaments not going to top eight is really crazy but it's just that's just the nature of the game when you know when you get to the end here and you've just got nothing but strong players from all over the world and everyone's vying for that top eight spot it's tough and that's gonna do it for this one thanks for listening guys uh, we are gonna keep going on with covering uh, the World Tour Finals. Uh, next up, we're gonna actually move on to the top eight. Uh, that was the last uh, pools match that I wanted to cover since both those two matches were pretty crazy. You know, the, the Yasha and the Pred one because those are both players that we expected to see in the top eight. And the fact that, you know, we did not see them is, is still pretty shocking. So I wanted to at least cover, you know, their pools matches before we move on to the top eight. So we will be doing that uh, next time. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the match reviews, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Ace.